Hello. Happy Friday to everybody. We're talking about right now cures for anxiety today, but we're going to wait for a little bit until we um, find some audience to talk to. <laughs> it's a gorgeous day here in Seattle. It's so warm, and I have to tell a funny story. Um, hold on one sec. Oh, yeah. Uh, a couple days ago, I did a class or a webinar for the League of Chiropractic Women, which if you are a chiropractor out there and you are a woman, then you must, must join, if not for you, then for the opportunity your membership dollars allow women in chiropractic to be grown and developed. So, a little plug for the LCW there. But I did a webinar for them in this very spot, um, and right before I started the webinar, I closed all the windows because there was yard people outside and um, in my townhome complex <laughs> I forgot to set up a fan so about halfway through it I literally was just dripping in sweat and it was horrible so I've set up a fan and so if it's distracting or loud I apologize but uh, it's got to be done because I think there are is maybe some more noise out there today as well I have one window open so I may sneak away to close that if uh, we get disturbed so again, we're going to be talking about right now cures for anxiety, and I am going to get into kind of my history with anxiety, but first I want to remind everyone that uh, we are well fit and fed. I always say we, the royal we, it's just me, uh, wellfitandfed.com, and if you would like printed articles on some of the things we talk about on Facebook Live and tons of other information including recipes, exercise tutorials, uh, great articles on different hot subjects of the day, then go to wellfitandfed.com, drop your email into the homepage sign up box and you'll get it right to your inbox. Super easy, you can unsubscribe at any time. The second thing is, as many of you know, I launched a book a couple weeks ago called The Three Day Reset, and very exciting news, it is available on Amazon right now. It's almost available on Amazon.ca for my Canadian compatriots, and I'm hoping that I'll get that sorted out within the next week. But right now, you can buy it right off my website, and that is actually a good way to go because if you use the coupon code THREE DAY, all capitals, then you can get some money off that. And so go to the website, online store, put the book in your shopping cart, and then put in three day, and you will get some money off your book. And so we've been having such a great time with the book and with the people purchasing the book and trying the program. They're loving it. And I'm excited about it. It's, you know, you sit in a dark hole writing stuff that you think is helpful to people, and then when it actually is, it's extremely rewarding. So... Thank you for everybody who's been responding and um, becoming part of the private Facebook group and um, just being so encouraging. So thank you for that. Now I'm going to wait just a couple seconds longer. I would like to know what everyone's having for dinner tonight. I'm going to make bison burgers. I was wondering if any of you have ever made them. They're so delicious. Bison is... Um, naturally grass-fed so you don't have to try to find grass-fed bison and it's so rich and delicious in my opinion compared to beef and turkey so there is great opportunities to use ground bison in lots of different recipes it's very lean it's leaner than ground beef of course and lots of protein so I'm gonna make some bison burgers with my secret bacon paste and cilantro and onion and garlic and salt and pepper I'm very excited because my husband Brent gets home tonight after a couple weeks away. Many of you know he travels for a living, so uh, it's nice when he comes home. It feels, I was telling him yesterday on the phone, I feel like I'm going on a first date because I've been spending the last two days cleaning the house and deciding what I'm going to wear and deciding on our menu and stuff. So yes, after 15 years of marriage, you can still feel that way. So I'm very excited to, to see him tonight. So let's get started. Uh, I welcome any questions. This is interactive. We're just having a chat and talking a little bit about some right now cures for anxiety. And I published a post on <clears throat> this recently and someone brought up the point um, that shouldn't we be looking more at, at why is everybody so anxious? Why is there all this anxiety? And of course, we 
absolutely should be getting to the core of what is this unrest in people and how do we address it and fill it. That's not today's talk. We're going to talk about the fact that when you're sitting in a restaurant, when you're in a crowd of people, when you're alone by yourself and anxiety hits in whatever form that is for you, what can you do? We're going to go over several things. Like I said, please interact as you can. I would love to hear from you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my history with anxiety, and I don't share this a lot. I'm starting to share a little bit more because I think it's important that clients and readers and people know my background. And I had a what I considered a first bout with anxiety shortly after I got married. I had changed jobs, I had moved, I had gotten married, I was not working at the time, I was a little bit rudderless, and I started having these breathing issues where I couldn't get a full breath in, I, I couldn't get it to the top, and it was creating like some nervousness. I thought I had some sort of lung problem or a heart problem, I'd get numbness in my fingertips, and I, I, I mean, I'd get backwards over the rehab bowl just to get a full breath of air in, I feel how I described it to a doctor was I felt like I didn't have any skin on, like everything was hitting me very sharply and acidically. And this happened a lot, multiple times a week it was starting to happen and so I was very concerned for my health. And I went to a couple different doctors and they all agreed I was having some mild anxiety. And of course I didn't want to believe that, uh, but I did some research and actually some close personal friends, one in particular, Bill talked about how uh, when he had some similar experiences, went through the same process I did, and it did come out in the end, um, that it was a mild stress condition, a mild anxiety, social anxiety, or just anxiety in general. And so when, once I recognized it, I started to learn some ways to work with it and to address some of the inner issues that was going on. So I suffer way less than I used to. But I do have bouts of it, for sure. And I've gathered all these different methods that help me in the moment um, bring it down a notch, calm it down. When I looked, after I got sort of diagnosed, if you will, uh, I looked back and I realized, oh, I had had elements of this for a very long time, and I just didn't recognize what it was. I didn't, I thought I was just stressed out, or I... I really wasn't sure what it was, and so now I can actually see a connection back into my teens. And so that was interesting as well, to see the evolution of what anxiety did to me in my life. And I know talking to people with anxiety, it manifests in so many different ways, from lightheadedness, dizzy, uh, nausea, numbness in the fingertips, shortness of breath, heart palpitations, heart pain, fatigue, um, panic, obviously. And whether you're actually diagnosed with anxiety or you just feel like you get stressed out in certain situations, some of the things we're going to talk about are going to be really helpful. So if you have any questions about my experience with anxiety, I chose never to medicate. I did not want to add stress into my system with those chemicals. And so I gathered the, the ideas that we're going to go through today as methods of treatment. Now I will say before I begin, not an in the moment treatment, but two things in particular addressed my anxiety, well there's lots of things, but two in particular I want to mention today addressed my anxiety in a very large way. Number one was consistent sweaty exercise, cardio, weight training, anything to get that heart rate up and then bring it down. I almost feel like it's a reset. I can go into an exercise session panicky, anxious come out completely calm and fine for the rest of the day. So for sort of bigger, longer term solutions, if you are not exercising vigorously, that's not a walk, not a stroll, um, not something that doesn't get that heart rate up. You have to get the heart rate up in order to have the benefit. If you're not doing that, I strongly recommend you implement it. And preferably outside, morning, studies tell us that that's even better, but anything is great. And number two was sleep. And what I started doing when I was in a really bad cycle, I started napping, I started taking long naps on the weekend, I started keeping my weekdays free of any social commitments, I started uh, 
making sure I was getting longer hours of sleep. I don't sleep well, many of you know. And so I needed to provide a space of this many hours so I could get this many hours of sleep. And so those are some things, sleep and exercise. But those are longer term solutions and we're talking about right now solutions for anxiety. So let's get into it without further ado because I don't want to keep you too long. It's Friday afternoon and I know people are getting ready to check out for the weekend. So the first thing, when I write about anxiety, I get tons of responses, tons of people read what I'm writing. It clearly to me is a big issue. It's a lot of people are suffering and that's so unfortunate, but it's even more of a reason why I wanted to provide some of these solutions to you today because I think there's such a need for it. So let's talk about, we'll talk about several different ones. I'm going to give you one or two examples of each one and we'll try not to be here for too long. So number one, breathing. Now you're like, yeah, no brainer. But I'm going to give you two breathing techniques, very specific breathing techniques that can help you in the moment of an anxiety attack panic attack or stressful emotions in a certain situation. One is called alternate nostril breathing and one is called 478 breathing. Alternate nostril breathing looks crazy but because I love you I'm going to show you anyway. So what you do is take your finger, you occlude the left nostril, then you breathe fully in through that right nostril, hesitate at the top, switch nostrils and breathe fully out through the left nostril pause, come back in through the left nostril, pause, switch, breathe out through the right nostril, and then we repeat. We go in through the right, out through the left, in through the left, and out through the right. This is called alternate nostril breathing. It's like a U-shape. It's this. Now, this is so effective, it actually makes people lightheaded if they do it standing for the first time. So my recommendation is to always learn how to do it lying down or sitting. Start with maybe five cycles, build up to 10 cycles. It's extremely effective. Number two, four, seven, eight breathing. Now, I didn't actually know about this one until I started researching for my article on anxiety, what four, seven, eight breathing was, but several sources cited it. And so what it is, is we breathe in for a count of four, and then at the top, we hold for a count of seven. Not easy, actually. <laughs> and then we breathe out for a slow count of eight. So four, hold for seven, out for eight. Four, hold for seven, out for eight. So we have alternate nostril breathing, in through the right, out through the left, in through the left, out through the right. Then we have four, seven, eight breathing, which is in for four, hold for seven, out for eight. Two breathing techniques you can apply right in the moment. The next thing is externalizing. And I used to keep a little journal in my purse of when I was getting anxious, I just open it up and I just start writing what I'm thinking about. Somehow taking it out of your brain and putting it somewhere else actually psychologically does help. I remember my mom talking about something called the worry jar that I can't remember her mother had it or I, I, I don't remember but I remember what it was and it was a jar that if you were concerned about something she had you write on a piece of paper what it was and you fold it up and you stick it in the worry jar give it up to that and it is it is interesting how externalizing it and removing it from the cycle that's going on in your head can be helpful I don't find this one works for everyone but who it does work for, it works well. So journaling or the worry jar is externalizing. The next one is touching. Three forms of this. Putting your hands on something cold has a, some sort of parasympathetic reaction to calming you. So I like uh, just finding something cold or getting cold on me, like getting into a cold bed or um, something along those lines or going out for a cold walk. That's number one. Number two is uh, touching something, Wor some kind of worry stone or anything. I used to have this, not this one, but I had another necklace that had four just perfect little flat pieces of metal on it that I could rub like that. And that sensation 
somehow breaks the cycle of this panicky anxiety trail treadmill that's going on in your head. And so some of you have heard of the worry stones or whatever it is, but just have something you can touch. Maybe it's in your purse or it's in your, keep it in your pocket. So you can slide your hand in there and you worry it away, right? Okay, so touching. Hi, Vicki. Shake. I loved this one. The background to sh shaking is that animals in the wild, when there is tremendous stress, get out of the area of stress, and then they don't sit down, they don't talk about it, they don't go to sleep, they literally shake. And so shaking also has some parasympathetic effect on our brains to calm our systems. So the shaking idea, I thought was great. Dancing could probably master that or just shaking like, just shaking around. So I really like that one because that was also one I hadn't heard of before, but I've actually tried it since and it is very effective. It just almost unplugs what's going on in your brain. And I, I love that. Another one is reflexology. My husband loves reflexology and it relaxes him tremendously. And reflexology, for those of you that don't know, is using particular pressure points on the feet to connect and affect areas throughout the whole body. It's not dissimilar to how acupuncture uses meridians to connect with certain organs, reactions and things in your body. Reflexology is very similar to that. So it's not a foot massage. It's addressing really particular points for relaxation, for organ function, for all sorts of different things. And there are some basic points around stress, anxiety, um, and that kind of thing. And you can just Google uh, reflexology stress points. And these diagrams come up, and they're perfect. So in the moment, if you can sit down and you can get to your feet and you can do some pressure points there, that can also help. Magnesium. I had someone call me the other day who was in the middle of a panic attack. She was very concerned about something that was ha happening for work the next day, and she actually self-solved the problem. She was considering a glass of wine or magnesium, and she decided to try the magnesium, and she said it helped almost immediately. And magnesium is very calming. In fact, the brand that I recommend is called Natural Calm. It's Natural Vitality. And I know that's backwards, but um, you guys are talented, so I know, I know this can work for you. And you can get this on through my online store. Uh, click through either to the Amazon store. It's actually listed right on the online store. So Calm, Natural Calm Magnesium Powder is great because you just throw it in some water and it acts so much faster than a capsule. But magnesium in general is calming to your muscles, to the functions of your body, and it's so essential and many of us are deficient, which can contribute to, guess what, anxiety. So... Uh, it's a no-brainer. Supplement with magnesium. Have it on hand for in-the-moment um, addressing of your stress and anxiety issues. Sunlight. I'll tell ya, we have a house in Arizona, and when I go there, I'm constantly amazed and pleased at how happy everybody is. And I'm not kidding you. And I'm not making light of it. No pun intended. I believe, and the data does tell us, that direct sunlight can help with depression and anxiety. And we are talking sunscreen free bodies out there for 20 or 30 minutes, not only to get your proper amount of vitamin D, but just the light itself. So sunlight is a combo deal because you're getting exposed to light and you're getting your vitamin D stores up. So that is a great one too. So if you are anxious, get outside, move around, get out into the sunlight. Yoga. Now, I know if you're in the grocery store and you're having a panic attack, you're not going to bend over and get into downward dog. But if you're at home or you're somewhere where it's safe to do a few poses, it can be so helpful. It can bring you down several notches. The couple of moves that I like are feet up the wall. So scoot your butt up to a wall and get those feet right up the wall like this. And that can be very calming. It's just a, a stationary pose, you're not moving. And then downward dog, just about everybody knows what that is. Just bend over and put your hands on the floor and move your feet back as far as you need to and try to kind of bring your heels down to the ground, breathing in and out while you're doing it, going back to the breathing. And then finally child's pose, which is just on your knees, you 
set your butt down on your on your ankles and reach out forward and just breathe in and out through there using the yoga pose to just help stretch your spine and calm your mind. So obviously there's lots of yoga poses and I just wanted to mention it as not only an ongoing help for anxiety but also right in the moment if you can do a couple of yoga poses that can be really helpful. Essential oils. These are so amazing and helpful. I love doTERRA oils. You can talk to me about that later if you want to, but what I will tell you is they have a couple of blends. Serenity blend, also just their basic lavender, Lang Lang, um, bergamot, basil, clary, sage, frankincense. There are several oils and oil blends that are directly impactful to stress and anxiety. And so to have those on hand and the way you use doTERRA oils is you, you can diffuse them into the air and breathe that in. You can just open the bottle, breathe it in. You can mix it with a carrier oil and just rub it and then breathe it in. You're getting it topically and, aromath and aromatically. So essential oils are also fantastic. Technology. This seems like a really obvious one, but it is interesting how we don't consistently address this. Meaning, if you've been on the computer all day and you've been checking your phone and been using your iPad and you feel some anxiety come on, what is important is to shut everything down, not just shut it down, turn it off and remove yourself for at least 30 minutes to an hour. EMF, blue screen, obviously there is tons of data out there to suggest that those can affect our serotonin levels, anxiety, depression, etc. So removing yourself completely from phone, iPad, um, and computer, and that goes true for sleep habit, uh, habit, um, habits as well. And so as much as po possible, maintaining a technology-free space where you sleep. So don't use your phone as your alarm clock. Don't read your iPad right before bed. Don't work on the computer in bed. None of those things are useful to you to try to bring you down to sleep and they certainly aren't useful if you are in the process of having any kind of anxiety attack. Get up and move away from any technology, even electricity, just get out and get somewhere where you're free of any of that interference, okay? Music. Music clearly has an impact on anxiety and depression. Just talk to any heartbroken teenage girl surfing iTunes and we know that it obviously meets a need. So my suggestion to my clients who suffer anxiety and stress is to have a playlist on your phone that you design, you curate, put together that is very calming for you. At least 15 songs and when you're in the moment get those earbuds in, sensory deprivation, get rid of the noise around you, get rid of the, you know, the distractions, put the music in, close your eyes and just start going through the playlist. It's one of the most effective ways because Getting rid of sort of the external irritants that you might not even realize are bothering you and just diluting down to um, just that musical influence that calms us. And I mean, we've known this for years and years, how much of an impact music has on our emotions. So have fun curating that music list, that playlist. I know I have a couple go-tos, particularly when I'm on a plane. I'm not anxious, but I want to get rid of all the external noise and I want to just be calm and relaxed in my seat, and it's so helpful. So, we're almost the last one, counting. I love this one for last because I find it to be the most interesting because it is extremely effective and it's so weird. And so, what it is, is several different methods of just counting. And I think the background, the unscientific background, is that it pulls your head away from focusing on your thoughts that you are right now. It externalizes your focus and, and it, it makes you do something that turns on other parts of the brain that need to be turned off, turned on in order to shut off that spiral. So you can do counting in several ways. You can count up to 100 slowly. Uh, one of the ways that a friend of mine taught me was she said, sit, close your eyes, picture a trail or a set of stairs or a hike that you like and look down, Imaginarily, look down at your feet and count your steps walking along that trail. That one I love. I particularly love that one for falling asleep. You could count backwards. You could count by threes. Something that requires a bit of a challenge. The one I actually like the best 
is not mathematically hard, but I find because I'm so visually stimulated, it is really helpful. So wherever you're at, wherever your anxiety is hitting, look up and look around. Count five of something. One, two, three, four, five trees, perhaps. Then count four of something. One, two, three, four cars, maybe. Three of something. One, two, three, three doors. Two and one. And just keep doing it over and over. And it is really a great tool. So let's recap. Obviously there is huge amounts of information on anxiety. We need to look into more about why are we a society full of anxiety people, anxiety sufferers, and um, anxious people. And of course, that's, that's an important question to ask, but today what we were uh, focusing on was just the right now ways to address anxiety. I shared a little bit about my anxiety past, which has been highs and lows, and it seems to um, be prolific in my family, and you know, my sisters and I talk about it a lot, and, and I definitely have friends that suffer too, so it is interesting to talk to different people about how it manifests for them, because it's so different for everyone. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I've chosen not to medicate. I don't want to add those chemicals into my body and impact that with even more stress from trying to detox the chemicals out of my body. So I choose natural things. Exercise being one of the biggest ones and getting enough sleep. But in the moment, if it hits, what can we do? And the things that we listed were breathing, externalizing, touching, shaking, reflexology, magnesium, sunlight, yoga, essential oils, technology, music, and counting. So that's all I have for today. I did want to remind you again to go to wellfitandfed.com and pop your email into the sign up box on the homepage so that you can receive great written articles, recipes, and exercise tutorials right into your inbox. And don't forget, we've got the three day reset on sale on Amazon and on my website. If you use coupon code 3DAY on the Well Fit and Fed website, you can get some money off that, that price. So I would love to share that with you. I have a couple spaces left for private coaching on the three day reset. And so if you are interested at all, it is such a deal. It's $159, $49 for three half hour personalized coaching sessions with me while you're doing the three-day reset. So it is absolutely a recipe for success. So please take advantage of that. And I thought we'd end today with some shaking. So if you're watching, I want you to shake the anxiety away. And um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Have an awesome weekend. And we'll see you soon. Okay, shake away. Have a good one.